I love resin 3D printing for my tabletop games. I think the technology is an incredible boon to gamers and digital artists all around the world. But resin 3D printing isn't without its risks, and I can't be an advocate for the technology, and not one for its safe use as well. And when I was talking to my friend Andy from Tin Bear Studios and encouraging him to buy a 3D printer, he expressed his concerns about ventilation. And it made me wonder, since I have almost the same situation as him of a small enclosed space, how difficult would it be to rig something up to ensure adequate ventilation? This room I've been sharing with 3D printers is super small, with a single window behind the desk. I do all my hobbying in here, I shoot and edit these videos, sometimes I make music, and of course, print loads of minis, and I'm sort of guilty of not taking resin safety as seriously as I probably should be, given the way I use this space. Sure, I wear nitrile gloves whenever I'm handling the stuff, I wash my hands frequently and generally try my best to limit the exposure I have to resin. However, fumes are a freaky thing to think about, and those little gas gremlins called volatile organic compounds, aka VOCs, are no joke. The only way I think this room could be any worse for 3D printing is if it didn't have a window. So obviously this isn't great, I've spent a lot of time in here with these printers running, and who knows what the long-term consequences of that will be, hopefully nothing serious and hopefully installing some proper ventilation in here is gonna be a huge help in mitigating any potential negative health effects. And yes, I hear you, I am a moron, and I deserve all the cancer. You don't need to tell me, I'll be the first to admit it. But while I've still got some functioning brain cells, I wanted to come up with a way to ventilate these resin fumes that was cheap and also flexible in terms of how it could be deployed and adapted as my workspace and printers change over time. For example, right now, I just want to vent a single printer, the Mono X, but in future, I may want to vent others or even a larger cabinet or enclosure full of printers. After thinking about the problem for a while and researching components, I decided a good foundation would be one of these inline fans and a length of this four inch diameter ducting hose stuff. I knew I wanted to create fittings for this hose that could be installed easily on most printers or printer enclosures. And I thought it would be really cool to have a quick disconnect feature that would let me quickly decouple the hose and move it out of the way or over to another source of fumes. So I opened up Fusion 360 and set about designing some parts. I knew I was gonna need a fitting for the window, another for the printer as well as the hose, and a cover for when the hose is disconnected. The design is based around these 10 by two millimeter neodymium magnets and M3 bolts, all of which I'm hoping will be strong enough for this job and readily available. I printed these in PLA plus at a 0.3 millimeter layer height with no supports and they all turned out nice. However, the fit for the magnets and bolts was a little bit tight. So I did go back and add more clearance for those. With the parts all printed, I decided to start the build at the window and work my way back toward the printer. I did originally plan on buying one of these adjustable window air conditioner kits to act as the outlet. However, I couldn't find one that was cheaper than a plank of wood, so plank of wood it is then. I did have to buy an 80 millimeter hole saw, but that wasn't too bad at $15. So after cutting the plank to fit my window and fixing the printer outlet fitting with some wood screws, I drilled a big hole using the hole saw in the middle and stapled some wire mesh to the other side to hopefully help keep that murderous Aussie fauna outside where it belongs. <laughs> the outlet fitting for the printer cover was pretty easy to install as well. I drilled it from the inside so that I could brace the acrylic from the back with an offcut of timber, using the fitting as a guide and dropping the M3 bolts through as I went to help keep everything lined up. I was a little nervous to use the hole saw on the acrylic, but thankfully it chewed through it as easily and cleanly as it did the plank of wood. So that was awesome to see. Hitting it quickly with some sandpaper to remove the burrs, the fitting was then installed on the outside. God damn it. I forgot to account for the heads of these bolts so they are sitting proud and causing a big gap. 
After creating some pockets for these bolts to nest themselves in and printing the replacement, I swapped it over and gave it another test. Perfect. Now you might be thinking that still isn't airtight and you'd probably be right. And I'm certainly no engineer, but I'm thinking that's not really gonna be an issue at all. And this totally legit scientific test, I hope proves me right. Oh yeah, look at that. Honestly, I've never really noticed the smell from printing all that much anyway, unless I've had the lid off to capture a time lapse like this. And really the only time the smell is super strong is when I'm post-processing prints and washing them in spirits. So I wondered if I could install some kind of flow hood above my hobby desk that I could move the hose over to when I need it and hopefully capture most of those fumes as well. So I picked up one of these cheap plastic storage containers from the local hardware shop and printed another outlet fitting to install on the side. I was going to need a way to mount this above my desk too, and I figured I should be able to design and print something to hook over the top of this acoustic panel. So a quick few measurements later and some modeling in Fusion 360, I had this. Right, so in conclusion, this was a complete success. I ran a large 12 hour print with the fan going and the room never once gave a hint of resin fumes. The inline fan, if you're wondering, is about as loud as the Mono X. So with both running, it kind of just sounds like there's two printers going at the same time and so isn't too annoying. The power consumption as well is probably worth mentioning. The fan is 50 watts. And so at my power cost of 23 cents per kilowatt hour, this works out to be 28 cents per 24 hours of runtime, which really isn't too bad at all. One concern I do have with directly venting the printer like this is delamination and other print failures occurring in colder weather. Since this would be actively pulling cold air into the printer and across the prints, that seems likely to happen, but I guess we'll find out. Otherwise, I am super happy with how this turned out. I'm glad I did it, and I hope some of you try it out as well. Something else I've realized this could be useful for as well since installing it is venting and airbrushing setup. Right now I do all my airbrushing in a cramped outdoor laundry, which is subject to all the problems that come with that, such as humidity. However, now I'm thinking I could airbrush at my desk and not worry too much about all those floating paint particles. Whether they would damage the inline fan over time or not though is another question, so I'd be curious to know if anyone has any experience with that. If you like this idea and want to implement it yourself, I've uploaded all these files to printables, as well as put links to all the stuff you'll need down in the video description. If you don't own an FDM printer like this Ender 3 V2, you could try printing these parts on your resin printer, but honestly, I think the best thing to do is get on your local classifieds and look for the 3D printing enthusiasts in your area. Before I ever had a 3D printer, I did this a few times, and it usually wasn't difficult to find someone to print something, and it was never more than 20 to 30 bucks. If you do, please be sure to snap some pictures and share them on the printables page for this project. It would be cool to see some of you putting this to use in your own hobby spaces and how you've adapted it to your own unique requirements. Okay, well, I hope you found this one useful. I know I can't be alone in not treating resin safety as seriously as I should be. Bottom line is we don't really know what the exact composition of each resin we use is, and therefore if you've been printing in less than ideal circumstances too, I hope you can give this project a go and implement some ventilation yourself. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all back here again soon. Bye bye.